Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the channel of the High Priestess of Hedonism. I am extremely excited to have a wonderful, wonderful guest today joining us, you know, on this, on this chat. And this guest, he believes in living in superlatives. He is the best-selling author of two novels, The Bhairaputra and The Hunt for Rama's Bow. He has been scaling up consistently assiduously to become one of the most dynamic literary agents in India today. He is the head of content development for a leading entertainment channel, a national law university graduate. He has been a cricket commentator for Star TV. Moons back, he's very young as we know, but moons back in his time you know, span, he also used to you know, dabble in making films but we'll get back to you know, that at some stage in future as well. Sure. But the tallest hat he wears is that of a dream catcher. He is excelling in netting aspirations of debutant authors. He is also the best known dream maker, turning dreams of hundreds of starry eyed authors into reality. <clears throat> So welcome to the channel of, to the chamber of the High Priestess of Hedonism, Suhail. I welcome you for a chat this evening. Thank you so much, Aruna. Pleasure always, you know, to have a word with you and connect. So I was looking forward to this. And I think both of us know that, you know, we, we've been planning this for so long. And, you know, today is the wonderful day where everything has come together. So really excited for a wonderful session. You're looking absolutely lovely. I do admire your jewelry because my mom would have certainly liked it. Thank so, you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this is just a precursor for things to come. So very excited and looking forward. Thank you so much. And I have to say that uh, Suhail's mother, the, the ravishing Kitty Mathur, and I have similar sensibilities, not just the hairstyle, you know, which, which we have, uh, you know, uh, it's quite similar, but also our pension for jewelry or for the nicer things in life. So that, that's a good start, really. So, so no, And can... also, also your liking for Suhail Mathur. Absolutely, absolutely, regardless, you know, undoubtedly so. You said it. So, Hale, you are today one of the leading literary agents in the country. And so my first question to you is, what quality do you expect to see in an author? So firstly, thank you so much for, you know, giving me that pedestal. And uh, I hope, uh, you know, we are going to live up to that. It's, uh, see, I always look at the story whenever I, uh, you know, get any submission, the story must speak to me. If the story appeals to me, I will go all out. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, what the market forces dictate, but if I, I believe in it, I would see to it that I would get it placed at its best possible publishing house. So when I, when I look at authors, your question was per se about authors. So if, if I have to talk to authors, you know, there would be a couple of things that I'd like to mention. Firstly and foremostly, it would be write a book that on, on a genre that comes naturally to you. You know, because when I did uh, my first book, The Bear of Putras, it was a historical mythological adventure back in 2014. You know, the book came out, did exceedingly well. At that point of time, you know, this genre was mushrooming into a successful one. So it wasn't that you know i wrote it because it was being successful but because it came naturally to me and then you know the book obviously also contributed uh, you know to the success of the genre in whatever extent it did but uh, you know ever since i was a young boy i was very interested and fascinated with in india's history and mythology and you know i always knew that whenever i uh, you know wrote a book it would be an amalgamation of the same so that i could bring out my facets as an author you know in front of the readers and uh, that's what happened but sometimes what happens also Aruna is that you know some people feel that this is like a bandwagon so if a genre is working then you know let us also write something within that genre and you know our, our chances of getting successful will be more but what they also should realize is that you know at the end of the day someone may buy your book because the genre is working but I'm assuming that every author wants to write much more than just one book in their lifetime, right? So the point is that if you're not writing something that is cohesive or that strikes a chord with the reader and feels gimmicky, your first book may do well, but then you will be exposed with that book. 
and you know you may not necessarily be able to replicate the success the next time around so it's very important for authors to know what their stronghold is secondly what i also feel is that while you need to uh, you know write something that comes naturally to it is always good and nice to know what the market is like also because at the end of the day the book has to sell you know not to the reader first to the publisher initially yeah. and then then to you know the reader so for a publisher to make that call you know the book should be interesting engaging and they should see commercial possibilities in it as well so it's always good to be aware you know i'm not saying that you write something in that genre totally as i mentioned earlier but if you are aware then you know you can bring your strengths and intermingle it with what is prevailing so that you know the readers can get the best of both worlds so i think that is something that one needs to uh, look at also i i would honestly recommend a lot of authors you know to spend time on editing the book and firstly and foremostly acknowledging the fact that their book may require an edit in the first place right a lot of times what happens is usually with first timers in some cases and then you know with certain authors who may be doing their second third fourth book and uh, i'll give you a detailed response actually to it so the point is that you know uh, sometimes people take it as an affront that you know how did you bring out criticism of our book which is not criticism i mean i would say that you better may as well get criticized by us in a constructive manner absolutely and rectify that issue so that you land up a publishing deal because the publisher is not going to give you criticism of any kind they're just going to say yes or no that's, that's right. about that's it and then you will be left wondering as to why it happened so you know just just today i was having a chat with someone and uh, you know there were certain positives in their book as well but the overall thing was that you know the word count was very high and it it could have been uh, you know reduced without really affecting the storyline and uh, so they were fine as far as uh, you know the positives were coming but there was just one point that i made and you know he was like okay i'll have to think about it so i said please go ahead and think but uh, you know please be neutral and objective in your approach if you are accepting you know the positives then you should also be ready to you know work on things that can be made positive i'll not say negative but things that can be made or turned into positive things um similarly what happens with you know established authors also is now you know aruna a lot of times and you know that we uh, commission a lot of projects sometimes what happens is that a book is taken up because the concept of the book is really interesting and at that point of time there are certain authors who mistake it for the fact that the book has been taken up because of their writing right okay it's the it's the premise intermingled with their profile that has done the trick and of course the market force is dictating the terms but next time around you know where the concept may be different you would be in for a rude shock and it has happened uh you know there was there was this author who had done a true crime book and uh, you know we we saw that it required an edit so we were able to get uh, another deal on board for the next book also which was fiction but then the feedback came from the publisher because the publisher doesn't care you know yeah. the publisher will say it i mean i have to traverse a path which is you know as a friend that's right more as a friend and you know as a guide rather than anything else but um, the publisher will say it bluntly and then you know egos get bruised and at that time i have to enter again and say that look 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 they do have a point you know look into it so i think it's very important to uh, be true to your craft and to yourself and wherever you see an opportunity to improve please improve otherwise you'll stop growing as you simple know, as that yeah absolutely and and i think authors more than anybody else must have you know spines of steel and guts lined with iron because you know you you are at every step you will be facing criticism some you know uh, beneficial like the ones coming from a friend guide and philosopher of a literary agent and you you know perform that role the the role the trio role very well for your authors some rude ones from the publisher which which is going to be absolutely stark in terms of yes or no and the ruder ones from the readers if the books are not going to do well so at every step you have to be able to do that had and also you know you have to rely on 
uh, your sort of, you know, um, the friend guidance philosopher that the agent is for you, because, you know, you have the finger on the market pulse and you know much more about the industry than authors who are myopic or inwardly driven would, you know, uh, even if you have an apple to apple comparison. And well, I'll give you an example. My piece, Suhail, if I had listened to you, I would have been an author of five published books by now. You know, so so really, you know, so authors have to be attuned to listening to somebody who comes and talks a lot of sense instead of taking it personally and saying, but, you know, I am so and so. Well, you, you can't really, you know, be, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, you, you can't have a swollen head and you have to be very sort of balanced in your approach and keep your eyes and ears open and know what is good for you, isn't it? And I think you, you always advise, you know, in the, in the right manner. So that, that's, that would be foolhardy for somebody not to listen. You know, that would be harakiri, I think, isn't it? But I also wanted to ask you, you know, when I said uh, qualities, because you see authors of all shapes and sizes of a wide, you know, age group of different creed and color and a big bandwidth, uh, you know, the young, not so young, you know, successful, starting out. What qualities, uh, you know, the personal and professional qualities would make one a good author in your point of view? Sure. So just to substantiate, you know, I don't know what you were saying earlier. I'll, I'll give you two examples. So, you know, with respect to, okay, I've forgotten one, so I'll give you the second example. now. So, so the thing is that, um, yeah, you know, uh, there was, there was someone I was speaking to and I said, you know, look, the book needs an edit. Again, it was a book with a high word count. And he said that, look, 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 uh, spending on any, investing anything on editing is very difficult because I have a huge marketing budget that I'm, you know, going to invest in when the book releases. And I told him that, look, you may as well take out a minuscule percentage from that budget and invest in your product because no. otherwise what you would be doing is that you would be promoting a substandard product no. or a product that could have been better. Okay. So, you know, that kind of an understanding needs to come about because okay. till such time that doesn't happen, you know, people feel, why should we do it? I mean, at the end of the day, we all, you know, have to sell it to somebody else. So the moment we make it more market ready and we need to understand also that, you know, Publishers are also human beings. So yes. the more publishing ready a project comes to them, you know, the easier it becomes for them to take a call. Correct. So, so I think that is something that I wanted to add uh, with respect to your question about uh, qualities. See, I always look at concepts which are new and fresh. They may not necessarily have worked in the past or may not have even you know, uh, been very prevalent or prominent as far as, you know, genres are concerned. But my point always is that till such time you do not know. Yeah, or till such time that you haven't brought out a particular genre in the market, you'll never know where, whether it's going to succeed or fail. So you have to take that risk, you know. I mean, uh, the point is that, and I'll give you an example of horror because, you know, I... I'm very grateful that a lot of people credit me with the, you know, the emergence of yes. horror as a genre in the literary market in the past few years. That's, that's because, uh, you know, I have had my own share of experiences. Uh, I've stayed in a haunted house. So, uh, and, and, uh, you know, the genre interests me and, and my conversation dates back to 2015, 16 with the publisher. And, you know, I said that, you know, are you looking at horror? And he said, no, we're not, you know, because we haven't really tried something over there. And that was precisely my response that, well, if you haven't tried it, how do you, how do you know whether it's going to work or not? Okay. And in the next four to five years, we worked with all the leading brands, right? From Penguin to Rupa to Hachette to Ohm, everyone, you know, who's, who's done something credible and incredible in, in the, you know, or in the paranormal space. So, and, and markets have been created in today, I think, all the major or at least most of the major authors who write, you know, in the paranormal uh, segment have been represented by us. And of course, I am really looking forward to your book, which promises to be an all time blockbuster as far as, you know, concepts are concerned. Thank you. I think that that is something that I'm really looking forward to. Why don't you just just give a one line teaser to people what it's going to be about? Just a one line teaser. On the first one that you and I have been working on. 
uh, the horror one, the one oh, which has. Oh God! You know, all I'm going to say is that it it uh, you know I I've learned the trick of the trade from you. So all I'm you know willing to say is that it's going to blend you know uh, spooky ghosts with chilly cantonments. So they are tales from the cantonment uh, from all over the country. And and the best catch is that you know they all are inspired by true stories. So yep. things that that have happened to me or to mine or to people in my sort of you know circle. So they all are true stories. Uh, people have to believe that believe you know. That. So they all are credible, incredible, credible ghost stories. Absolutely, looking forward to that. Looking forward. Right. So yeah, as I was saying, so something new, fresh always works. At the same time, you know something that is engaging. also you know it it might be something that works really well i mean i was i was having a chat with uh, you know my dad the other day and uh, yeah i was just contemplating that uh, a lot of lot of these uh, authors who come you know young authors now of course over the course they've all become experienced because we've been doing so many books yes. with them but usually you know uh, young authors come and you know we are always more than willing and happy to uh, you know work with them collaborate and you know bring their books out because the vision of the book bakers is to encourage new talent but that in no means you know is an indicator that we will not work with someone who's established and you know people have joined in uh, with us i think uh, manjri prabhu and mr vineet bansal ms manjri prabhu and mr vineet bansal were you know the pioneers who were already best selling authors and you know they joined and collaborated with the book bakers and then you know uh, everyone joined in later on so so that's there but but you know sometimes what i what i feel is and which is why i also advise my authors to work on certain genres certain topics and themes is because you know a book may be good but for a publisher it's a new author or a young author and they may still bet on them but it takes that much more effort uh, you know from the agency to pitch them and hard sell them right. to the publisher that's right i mean i mean i wouldn't mind if you know an already established name comes and says this is the book so it becomes easier to sell it you know <laughs> so so those are the kind of things that one also tries to contemplate i mean i mean you know you may be making a movie with a debutant who you see a lot of potential in whether it will strike you know a chord with the audience or not or hit the bulls eye remains to be seen in comparison to say someone like arithik roshan coming and saying let me do a movie with you so you know the chances of it Ah, uh, higher. Right. So, so you know, the point is that we want to traverse both paths equally, because it's important. It's important, and uh, thankfully, people have started realizing what our core competence is. That you know, even with established authors who have not really experienced a certain type of pitching scheme, is what we are doing. You know, where they land up a deal, you know, at a very early or nascent stage, uh, as far as the books are concerned. So, I think that is that is something that I look at. So, uh. the variety is wide you know it's it's what makes a good author is someone who can write a good story first okay. write it well and then also sell it try to sell it um you know obviously that's not the ideal function of an author but it's just what uh, you know the times that we're living in tell us about Absolutely. and and i don't say it you know for any vested interest because at the end of the day if a book sells it's not going to make any difference to me it's going to help the publisher correct okay. but the point is that because i believe in the concept and the story and the author i want it to sell as much as possible That's so that you know you see the dream of that person being realized at the end of the day why is someone writing a book or why is someone making a movie they're doing it so that they can reach out to the masses at max at you know the maximum potential so so you know you need to uh, do so because movies and books are on a completely different scale altogether right so so the thing is that once you have gained you know some sort of momentum always build on it because i always tell my authors that when you're doing your first book you have a reader base of zero yes yeah because nobody's read you so hmm. you don't know what to expect but when you're doing your second book even if you have 100 readers with you You are at an advantageous position comparatively than what you were when you were doing your first book. Correct. So, so you know, the idea is to build on gradually and create a brand value for yourself. Right. Right. How fascinating. How fascinating. You know, Suhail, I have said that to you a multiple times. You are an old soul in a young body, right? 
because you always come out with pearls of wisdom that sort of you know belie your age and your numbers of years of experience because of your prescient quality, your observation skills, and and your enthusiasm for life, really the joie de vivre and the enthusiasm in life and the goings on around you. So I feel you know our conversation is going to benefit. That's why my questions are streamlined like that. Our conversation is going to benefit all the budding authors, also the old ones, and shake them off their army. So my second question to you is, you know, what important aspects must writers bear in mind while writing their book from the point of view of the market, the publishers, and their readers? Right. So I think one very important point is I think I've already covered a couple of points earlier. So the one point that uh, you know we haven't really spoken about is the word count. So right. Word count plays a very crucial role because you know we we've got scripts uh, which were like one lakh forty three thousand words, and we've also got scripts. I'll say scripts because I can't really call them books, which had a word count of three thousand words. So. Uh, so you know the point is that three thousand words is lesser than an average short story, you know, or equivalent to an average short story's word right. count. Can't really be uh, termed as a book. But the point is that if you know what the market is like, it'll definitely help you, because not every publisher looks at a novella, right. you know, or and any publisher, I think any publisher in the trade will not look at a book, you know, traditionally, and we only work with traditional publishers. Hence, I'm mentioning this. You know, if the book is book has such a high word count, because what uh, you know authors do not realize is the fact that you know every every author wants to write the best, which is why they're writing what they are, right? Uh, but the point is that uh, a higher word count will lead to more number of pages. So more number of pages means the print price is higher, Correct. and a higher print price also results accordingly in an increased MRP, and an increased right. MRP is equivalent to reduce sales because it becomes that much more difficult for you know the average customer to buy a book so so you know if you've written a book which is a lakh 43 you are in essence looking at a book which would be priced at 799 rupees and uh, would someone want to invest that much uh, you know on a book maybe yes but how many such people would want to do that is the question I and mean, if you ask me i'd probably do that you know because money is not an issue quality is, you know, as a reader, and I'm sure you'd feel the same. Yeah. But uh, not everyone does, you know. Some people have an issue even if a book is priced three ninety nine or four ninety nine. So seven ninety nine is almost double of that. So it's very important to know, and it's very important to be flexible. Uh, again, I'll go back to one from the archives, as I call it. You know, where uh, you know someone had sent me a script. It was one lakh twenty five thousand, and I advised them, asked them rather, didn't advise but asked. That do you see a potential of you know turning it into maybe two books because then it would be say sixty thousand words each, yes. which makes it fairly Absolutely. conducive Correct. for anyone to publish and for anyone to purchase also. Um, and you know if the first one does well, you can always come back with the second second part, so your story doesn't get affected. And at that time, the author was really reluctant, and he said that no, no, this is my vision. I want it actually. I want to make it a five part series. So this is just the first part. So right. if I break it down, it'll be a ten part series. So, so, so what I told him was that, you know, for the 10th part or even the second part to come, it's very important that the first part is selected, right? right. So, right. so that is, that is there. And, uh, okay. So as, as always, I have. Hello. I was going to make a special request to get our VIP, you know, into the frame and into our show. So hello, my dear Samara. Hello, you see? Good. Hello, how are you? Several to you, you know. Delighted to have you grace our show, Samira. Samira, say bye now. Bye, okay. baby. Bye-bye, darling. And I was going to, you know, request you to get the lady, you know, the little angelic yeah. lady. She is, she is, she is very, very camera friendly. Yes, she, she is. She is very camera friendly. So, you know, the moment she sees me in conversation okay. with anyone, you know, Correct. it's also happened that I was doing my official meetings. Yes. And she, you know, entered those meetings as well and said hi to everyone. So it's good. Actually, I think I just try to encourage that facet because it just shows that she's confident, That's you know, right. rather than keeping her away and uh, That's she's right. harmless. Sir. And, you know, yeah, the pandemic has shown us that, you know, our lives are not to be lived, you know, at least the professional lives are not to be lived within the four walls of a cubicle. We are much more than that. 
and we have opened up our worlds and our minds and our spaces, you know, and brought our people also into our work. So there, there is this you know, happy confluence of work, the personal and the uh, professional, which is a very, I think, which is a very happy place. You know, it keeps your, um, uh, I think, sanity alive as well, you know, and keeps it in check. So here I wanted to ask you, you know, like so, uh, just, just to yes. finish, just to finish yes, what absolutely. I was saying. Absolutely. So, then, so then I said that, uh, you know, it'll turn into 10 books otherwise. So I said, okay, yes. fair enough. Then take your chance. I wouldn't be able to take it up because if I'm taking it up, then I'd like to add value to it. Yes. And I, I feel that it'll be difficult for us to get a traditional contract for the right. same, you know, and then you'll be like, Are yaar, humne agency ke sign kiya, kuch nahi so better that, you know, maybe you try at your own end because I don't see us adding value. And you know, it's very important, Aruna, to be true to yourself. Yes. Um, given given my personal opinion, I don't mind however long a book might be, you know, if the author wants to tell their story. Uh, because it's not a movie that you have to see it at one go. You can always read it. But the pricing and the other commercial factors come in, which come in from the point of view of the publisher, which the author should be aware of, or if not aware, should be made aware of. And if they still decide to, you know, unsee it then then i think that's that's their own personal call so also, this gentleman then way, again also the, from the reader's point of view i mean do we want to read a suitable boy you know uh, or, or i have another book from a from a dear friend a student writer coronation times which is a thick thick opus you know would the readers also have the patience to read so much you know with the barrage of things uh vying for our attention all the time isn't it so publisher, yes, and you know, what you also need to what you also need to realize is that most of these thick books that are there in the market haven't really been published in India first. Yes, they've true. been published in other countries and have true. now been brought to India. Quite or if true. there was a particular book that was published in India that was like say twenty years ago, or someone who's doing literary fiction and is an established name. So you know uh, that's there. But but most of the literary fiction authors from India don't really stay in India. I mean. You know, you have uh, Vikram Seth or you have Salman Rushdie or right. you have Arunati Roy. Uh, you know, most of most of Jumba Lahiri, uh, most of these people aren't staying in India, you know, which is why they're also eligible for these prizes. That's why they've gotten to be known and recognized, you know, because they won or were nominated for very, very pertinent and important literary prizes. And someone was asking me the other day that, you know, how do I apply for, you know, the Man Booker Prize? I just told them that, you know, one of the guidelines that I've seen for most of these prizes is that you need to be a resident of the U UK or, you know, in some cases you need to be a resident of, uh, you know, North America for that matter. So most of the Indian authors, you know, who stay in India per se, aren't eligible for it because they don't reside, you know, in the Ooh. territory that people can be made eligible for. It's got nothing to do with talent it's got nothing to do with stories the first criteria is that you have to be a resident of you know the uk so unless unless uh, you know uh, aruna you can say that uh, you know you you maybe maybe you can be uh, you know eligible for it because you were a resident of modern day uttarakhand so so i think that uk can definitely come <laughs> You know, uh, you know, handy over here, but, no, but you know, I was going to ask you that question. It is in my, you know, on my list. Then why, why do international, most international awards and Booker and and you know awards such as that uh, are really, you know, they they tend to preclude or they stay sort of inaccessible largely for Indian authors. Is that only mm. because of the place of uh, residence of yeah, the yeah, author, yeah. or is it something yeah, else yeah. too? No, no, that's the, that's one of the major conditions. So, you know, if you aren't staying there or you aren't a domicile or a resident, you can't even apply in the first place. I see. Whether the book is good or bad will come much later. Are you eligible in the first place to apply for it? No, you aren't. So, you know, that's how it is. At least with most of these. Uh, so what ones. about Indian authors and, and authors from the subcontinent and South Asian authors, Southeast Asian authors? You know, what are the awards that they can look forward to, you know, which are at par with the bookers, for example? See, there are, there are, there are a lot of, lot of awards that are there and, you know, a lot of new awards are coming in. The problem that I really have with awards, and I'll be fairly honest with you yes. over here, is that, you know, uh, awards in the literary field are uh, categorized or, you know, uh, do not traverse a vast scope. So, you know for a fact that there'll hardly be any commercial fiction that right. will win an award. 
Right. It'll it'll always be some literary fiction that will be nominated in the first place or some true account that will be nominated. You know. So again, it's it's a group of five six snooty people with their own standards of literature and to show to the world. Maybe they like it in their personal space. You know. Uh, just reminds me of this meme that Abhirup Dhar, uh, our author, you know, and best-selling yeah. author, had posted, which is which is based on uh, this scene from Zindagi Na Milegi Dubara, where uh, Nasiruddin Shah asks uh, his son, he's meeting his son Farhan Akhtar for the first time, that you know, what do you do in life? So he says X Y Z things. He said, "What? Okay, but apne le kya karte ho? Khud ke le kya karte?" I remember. Lovely. So so Abhirup had turned it into uh, Konsi horror. authors ki kitabe padhte ho and you know the answer was something like uh, stephen king and a few yeah. others here or there so he said wo to theek hai par khud ke liye kya padhte ho so he says abhirup dhar so, <laughs> so you know marvelous. that was a, marvelous yes that's right there was a meme that was there so so my question to them also so maybe in their personal space they do like it but you know they have an image to keep and they need to show that oh you know we like uh, xyz kind of content which i find uh, to be rather silly and flimsy uh, because literature is literature at the end of the day you can't you know if it's good literature then you have to appreciate it yes. because your award is not saying that this is only for commercial fiction secondly and also what i feel is that you know these people have uh, kept themselves confined to just three four five publishing houses correct and they don't want to move ahead yes they have stagnated i would say they've stagnated because the literary industry has not stagnated right. they are moving ahead yes. but their vision is that oh if it's not an x y z publisher then the book will not be good the book cannot be good or we will not even consider it why i mean was was a publisher okay. like so was was a publisher like say a penguin for example i'm just taking an example yes. uh at one point of time penguin was also one day old correct Correct. It, it did not start off as a fifty-year-old company, did Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Right. So, so the point is that again, you know, most of these award juries are like HR professionals and companies where they want to hire twenty-five-year-olds with thirty-five years of experience. So, so, so you know, that is that is how Very well. it basically is. So, I I don't personally give too much weightage to it, and you know, uh, these are the same people who will probably look down on any. new award that has come into the market that oh what is that award i haven't heard about it well if you haven't heard about it you've heard about it now so probably okay. the next time around when somebody asks you you'll know so any award that comes your way any recognition that comes your way is well appreciated and you know should be acknowledged Absolutely. but uh, these benchmarks that people try to make that you know i have to get this or i don't i i what will i do if i don't get it i i, I don't see too much reasoning because their standards in the first place are warped as for me in my personal opinion it's it's like it's like you know you, you might be a rohit shetty and maybe delivering 100 crore movies one after the other but you'll never be nominated for a best film true true as simple as true, that true 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 absolutely ruskin born has never won a booker you know and yet he's one of the highest selling authors right so sure. uh, so it's fine i mean it's okay it's, it's all right Now my next question to you, Suhail, is that what know, he has won and what he has won and what a lot of others have won are the hearts and minds of the readers, which I feel is more important. Absolutely, absolutely. And in- at age eighty-seven now or eighty-eight, he's one of the most uh, you know uh, profoundly read, and he's such a prolific writer at this age and time. So you know that that's one sort of uh, goal to aspire to. A very very too. funny, very funny incident that I want to tell you. Yes. So I was staying at I was staying at Rokhbi Manor. Right. Uh, yeah. I love it. Uh, It's a lovely yeah, hotel. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So last last time when I was staying over there, I was I had just gone down for a stroll, and you know there were a couple of guys who were standing near a car, and they were having a chat. And one of them says, "Arey, yar, yahan par ek wo bhi to rehta hai author. Ta kon? Arey ek hai na yar, kya naam hai uska? Bond, bond. Ha, Russell Bond na naam hai uska. Russell Bond." <laughs> I, I couldn't stop laughing. I still remember it. it was two two and a half years back, but oh, I still God. remember it. it was hilarious. Russell Bond. Yeah, so that that's 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 gratifying. Neither for Russell Brand nor for Ruskin Bond, right? Absolutely. Terrible. Yeah. Anyway, you know, Suhail, you have been one of the biggest dream keepers for authors, having agented more than eight hundred books now. Is that the count yeah. you're looking at? Yeah. 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 So I want to ask you, what do you look for in an author and their works? 
And when I say, you know, what you look for an author and their works, what is that little, you know, that mojo or, or that X factor or the uniqueness, you know, because every author comes with their brand of uniqueness, you know, and they, their book is special. But what is it that you look for in them and in the book that you're going to be holding in your hand? As I said, firstly, firstly and foremostly, the first, the first document that I look at is the synopsis. Right. That, that gives me an idea whether I would want to read ahead or not. Is it enticing me, engaging me or not? So if the synopsis is just a one pager, you know, so a synopsis is like a trailer of a movie. Correct. So if you've seen the trailer and it doesn't engage you, would you pay money to uh, go into the theater to see it? I don't think so. So the point is that that's a trailer for me, you know, and the three chapters are like an audition. So if I know that, you know, this person has potential and this is the story that they're writing, I take it up. I mean, I'm, I'm someone who works a lot on gut. And I stay very firmly, you know, passionate about what I feel. So, so external responses don't, uh, you know, waver my confidence in a particular thing. It may do so to authors. And I've seen that very strangely, you know, I was speaking to a, an author and, you know, the author was saying that, you know, I will promote the book if people like it. So I said that, why are you basing, you know, the success of your book on others? On the readers have you written a good book as for you if you have then you promote it then you promote it because as for you you've written a good book if you're going to judge your own success by others or the parameters that others set you're never going to be satisfied in life so it's very important that you know you have that self-belief self-confidence and tell the world that look i am good because aruna you know that in, in the times that we live in, there are going to be very few people who are, who, who are going to say that, look, you are good, you know? Correct. So, so the world is, I am good. Try to do that so that people take note of you and then eventually say that, yes, he is good or she is good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful. Wonderful. Very well said. So then, ladies and gentlemen, that was Suhail Mathur, one of the brightest lights in our publishing literary industries and a dream maker for so many authors with stars in their eyes who come out with aspirations, with dreams, with hopes to get their book babies out, to have their unique stories be heard, be read by the world, you know, um, out there. And he helps us um, bring our stories out. So that was a fantastic conversation with his, in his inimitable style, with his usual candor and the tips that he so wisely shares. It's for us to reap and harvest those pearls of wisdom. We will see you again because there are, there's a lot more to ask Suhail about a writer's life and a writer's journey. We will have him back with us shortly. Until then, bye for now. But before you go, just before you go, please like, share and subscribe to the channel of the High Priestess of Hedonism. Goodbye.